Okay, we're going to do, or try, another photo stamping piece. And what I'm going to do on this one is to stamp something out that may not be the ideal type of image to use on a photograph because it's the image is a little bit more open, okay? Instead of uh, being something uh, like a silhouette that easily covers um, the photograph where the image exists. And the image that I'm going to be using is this covered bridge piece that has a lot of deciduous types of uh, trees in it. Uh, the bridge itself is kind of a wide open type of image. And what I mean by that is it's just not solid. It's not like a solid silhouette. So you'll see um, the cloud formations and texturing that exists on the photograph showing right through the image where um, it's just not solid. All right, so let's take a look at it here. And I'm doing this for a reason. I, I, I'm just kind of curious in these um, photo stamping experiments as to what exactly can we do on the photographs and how far can we push um, the scene after it's been stamped. Okay, now on this background, I don't, I'm not starting off with anything too distinct in terms of having a lot of different really hard um, definitive transitions of value, meaning something going from very light to very dark. I mean, if I had that showing right through the covered bridge, it would be hard to, you know, blend those two areas in. So something like this would definitely need something a little bit more solid. But let's take a look here and see what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'm just stamping this out in dye-based ink, if you haven't seen uh, any of the other um, kind of more recent photo stamping scenes. All right, so on this one right here, we have transitions of gray, you know, because of that gray down here, and this is white, so we got those clouds showing right in the um, the rooftop here. It doesn't, it's not too extreme though. This looks like a shadow on the top of the roof, doesn't it? So, I don't know. I Maybe in terms of going for the extremities, this one's not too bad. You know, I think we can work on this. But anyway, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see just how far we could, I don't know, for lack of a better word, kind of muscle the image into an existing background like this. And, I mean, we're going to have to do that on this one. I mean, it's a lot easier when you're just stamping solid trees, big pine trees or something like that, that are just solid black over the top of, you know, a very textured background. But let's see what we can do with an open type of arrangement here with a lot of open spaces to fill in. All right, this is the maple pear. I'm just kind of masking off that grass down here. The maples are kind of up at that level. Let's build them up a little bit more. I'll take this and mask that off. Build, build this up a little bit more. Stamp this a little bit higher. Okay. Easy stuff. Okay, so we have this right now. All right, so we have a lot of maple pear. Now, I mean, I could go for something a little bit more monochromatic and just do grayscale in here, but let's not do this on this one. That's, I mean, that's a really easy and effective way to do photo stamping, but I want to push things more. So let's see how far we can um, take things like color in this scene. All right, now, what I've found so far in stamping on photographs with dye-based inks, I mean, you can get really good print, right? And I find that this does dry fairly quickly, so... Um, it's not instantaneous, though, and I, I don't know. I'm, I don't think I want to heat set it. There is a little bit of moisture on here, though, so I will wait a touch for this to dry. Now, I think I'll give it about maybe 10 minutes or so, and then we'll come back to it and start toning in some extra colors and whatnot. Let's try to make this into kind of a fall uh, color scheme and let's see exactly how far we can take this um, 
uh, imagery and to define the uh, the lights and darks in it, color schemes, everything like that, and uh, see what it'll look like on a photograph. All right. So, a few minutes here. Okay, I've given this about 10 minutes or so. And let's see where we can take it. I'm going to approach this piece kind of like I would as if I was working on glossy cardstock, and I don't know if that's really the best approach, but that's the approach I'll take. And let's see where it'll go. Now, the approach I'm just talking about, kind of layering on some... Um, some dye-based inks, and trying to define um, some different areas in here. Now, I can't define light and shade the way I normally do, starting on a white piece of paper, because we have, you know, an existing kind of grayscale um, lighting scheme already developed in here from the use of the photograph in the background, anywhere where it's gray, was the gray sky, all right? So, but let's see where we can kind of push things. Um, and manipulate it, I guess. All right, so what I'll do is I'm looking for some, um, some green color schemes. Now, one thing that I know about working on this type of foundation right here is that it takes ink differently than like a cardstock, all right? It tends to, I, I feel like it dries, um, the applications dry much faster, and I think it's from that I'm guessing that emulsion coating on the surface, so it kind of grabs a little bit more, but that's the whole thing about this experiment, is just seeing how far we can kind of take it and, um, you know, incorporate um, kind of the characteristics of the surface into our existing techniques or whatever, or existing aesthetics, maybe. All right, so so far so good. I mean, it feels pretty good applying this. I'm do I'm I'm using a little bit more of a delicate touch than maybe I normally would. Uh, in, in other words, I'm just kind of tapping a little bit lighter, going for a what I'm guessing is a slower application of ink. But I mean, it's not too different. I'm just kind of sponging that color on there, okay? Sometimes it's hard to tell. You know, <laughs> these uh, trees really, from a textural standpoint, really blend in with that background. They have the same kind of texturing as the clouds, so, you know, just kind of trying to stay within that form there. So yeah, maybe I have to leave a little bit more observant because it's a little bit busier looking back there. Okay. I'm putting green up into that tree, but I, I, I do want to bring in some fall colors into it, too. But you can do that with um, inks in the in your blending with something like this, and in fact, the green should kind of, uh, kind of help to tie in um, those other, other fall types of colors. It gives it something in common with the green down here. Or whatever colors you, you bring into the rest of the scene, just kind of incorporate them um, into the overall color scheme. And what I mean by that is just, I think it looks better to have kind of colors running into other forms. Even if I put a little bit of this green on the bridge, it might look okay. You know, just as kind of a, a slight tinge of um, the surrounding colors within there. So if you can tell, I put a little bit of uh, green over the top of that. Now this one was a very peritard. It's it's kind of a warm, light green. And on top of that, the way that I'm applying it like this, it's a really kind of dry brush type of effect. And then I want it to get a little bit more intense, what you do is you just, you know, you just use more and more of it in a given area so until it reaches its kind of maximum uh, value and intensity okay but kind of just tapping it around like this in a very light touch it really gives you a lot of control over it
it slows down the application of that color in terms of reaching its full intensity and value. That's darkness and brightness, in other words. It's kind of more of like a very pale pastel version of it when you tap it very lightly, especially when you're sponging it with a, you know, um, an applicator like this. Okay, so that looks okay so far. I, I don't know, just after one color, things are starting to come around. I, no, I'm not... No, that was a very light color, so that one, I don't know, you can see it as just like coloring in. But I did go a little bit more saturated in some areas, like down in the shadows. Um, it's a little bit brighter. I, I applied more ink there, okay? Because, um, as I was mentioning in a previous video, that's kind of a little bit of the difference between, say, coloring something and coloring and lighting something at the same time, okay? When you do things, uh, when you color, apply color um, for the purpose of color, but also as lighting, it means you, you're kind of oscillating the use of it. Unless everything is just supposed to be dark, then of course, you know, not. But let's say, for example, this tree, okay? I want this tree to be cast in a shadow. So I'm coloring down at the base of the tree like that, okay. But I'll bring some of this up into the tree as well. So now we have a little bit of lighting and coloring with this existing, what is this, bamboo leaves. Kind of a, the next tone. I, I thought that would be the next value in green that I happen to have here. Well, Here's the pale green right here. Maybe that would be a little bit lighter than the bamboo leaves. I'm not really quite sure, but they're close enough where if they're close enough, it doesn't even matter um, which one you use before the other one. Okay, so see that right there? It's like darker right in here. So you're coloring, but you're also shading with that, meaning you're not doing the same exact application with that given color or hue or value. Um, uniformly throughout a, an object or an area. Okay, so let's bring some of this down into the grass right at the base of the trees right here. This is this is a really it's a really fun kind of relaxing way to work on these uh, pieces here. <laughs> I mean, I can do this on white pieces of paper too, but it's I don't know, it's kind of nice having that kind of that cloud area established. And it I don't know, it just it provides a little bit of a contrast against kind of the hand-drawn form. It's just a matter of, with photo stamping for me, it's a matter of kind of merging these two worlds together, you know, the existing photograph in the background, something very, very realistic, because it's a photograph, and the hand stamped, okay, which is not a photograph, so, I don't know, it's kind of all right, harder to go for kind of photo realism, not that that's what I'm, you know, I never try to do that in scenes, but since I do have it now within this given composition in the photo stamping technique, it's a matter of kind of merging those two worlds together in a nice kind of easy and graceful manner. Okay, so kind of coming around a little bit. See how I'm kind of oscillating? It's a little bit lighter and darker, okay?
right. I have this urge to go a little bit brighter, okay? So, if you want to go with bright tones, I don't know, try, try other types of inks too, but Marvy's a good way to go. Before I do that, let's try the peeled paint here. Here we go. Peeled paint, distress ink. By the way, here's the mementos. Peeled paint, the distress inks are a little bit more earthy looking. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit dark. Let's try the light green, Marvy. It's a super bright green. It's not going to make things lighter, okay? It's because I'm applying it over the top of the other t colors, but it can provide a little kind of bump in intensity that I'm going for here. Okay, so you can you know, try all kinds of different things too. Don't forget about your alcohol markers and whatnot. And I'll get to those in a bit. Okay, let me see. Oh, I thought that was a fingerprint. I thought I was removing some ink just by putting my finger down like that. But that's, that's a bit of the sky there. See, I'm looking at kind of th different things. Um... <laughs> than normal because I don't know how this is going to go in terms of process that there's little quirks here and there uh, within the given uh, process okay so that is that with the greens um, let's see I need to wash off some of my stylus tool tips here. We need yellows, don't we? And browns. Okay. Um, distress inks. On an old, kind of aged, covered bridge. Is there a better line of inks for that purpose? I don't know. Maybe, you know, a huge range of alcohol inks or something like that. But the distress, kind of aged look is a good way to go, I think. Let's try some mustard seed in here, too. Let's go, let's try to bring in some yellows into this um, kind of color scheme for the trees. Huh? That looks pretty good. It's got a little bit brighter, and it's also kind of a... Oh, it's not a temperature change. It's just, it's, a, it's kind of a hue change. It's moving into the yellows. Of course, where I overlap the green, it doesn't look like yellow. It looks more like a yellow-green. But I think that looks pretty good. The leaves are starting to... kind of uh, move into their fall color. And then I'd bring this into this grassy area too because kind of the grasses and whatnot kind of follow suit along with the, uh, the leaves. Let's have a look. It's a little bit, everything's starting to, it's, it's, there's, a separation um, from the background photograph here. Now this, in other words, this is really starting to stand out more, but it's also kind of, it's, it's distancing itself, the imagery from the background. And that's where we'll, you know, the challenge is to kind of re-harness that and bring that back where we need to in terms of Kind of creating a little bit more of a, a cohesive statement in here, okay? 
All right, now this is antique linen. This is where I'll start addressing some of the, uh, the brownish tinges that we'll use in here. So let's apply this to the covered bridge. And I'll bring it into my brown, uh, my, my green area, sorry. Like so. Okay, bring it on the road. It's lighter than that gray of the sky of the road, so it doesn't really show up down there. There's a slight tinge of it down here, but it's still a little bit uh, kind of separate. Okay, now this one is the tea dye, which is darker than the uh, antique linen, so this is showing up a little bit more in terms of kind of a warm glow. I mean, it doesn't read as tea dye because you're putting it again over the top of gray, but I can see that kind of that warm tinge down here. See, I, I put that antique linen up here, but you can really see the, uh, the tea dye here, so. I'll, bring, I'll start utilizing some of this down here. And again, up in the trees. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Let's try the walnut stain. Hmm, the walnut stain's pretty dark, so be careful. That almost went a little bit too dark there. Let's try to add this into the shadow areas. Okay. Kind of at the base of some trees. What I what happens is I, I find that as I'm doing this, what's a little bit different from this and cardstock is I start applying it, and this is I don't know, this is my take on this piece at least. You know, I don't know if it's with all photo paper, but it's not really showing up too much, and then it suddenly it feels like it grabs or something like that and then suddenly you have a pretty strong saturation of that color on your piece so as you're applying it you know just kind of be mindful try to get a feel of um, each color as you apply it and how fast it's going to apply you don't want it to apply kind of faster than you'd want you can kind of blend in something, kind of a, an intentional mark or an undesired mark. But it's just far easier just to not have it in the first place, so. Okay, that bridge looks pretty good with that brown on there. The rooftop looks a little bit anemic, though, without, you know, some of this tone. So let's go in with this walnut stain. I'm going with the direction of those planks, those wooden planks on there. So I try to go with the uh, the spirit of the object as much as I can. Right, now see, I, I colored some of it, but I left a little bit untouched like that. That little bit of light on there really helps, doesn't it, in terms of kind of turning the object in space. It looks like it's more three-dimensional that way. All right, so let's do a little bit of this front as well. Okay, and to make it look like it has three different sides, you know, top, front, side, or whatnot, I will try to apply some of this on this side right here to create a separation from that front, okay? So you're saying that the light is hitting it different from this angle than from this one by the way that you, or the amount, I guess, that you color it. All right, yeah, it feels a little sticky as I kind of do this, but just keep a nice light touch and you'll be fine. It, it won't tear your, your uh, applicators. Just always kind of do it Apply it in a nice light and as graceful a manner as you can. Meaning lightly, don't 
rush things, don't get frustrated and say, hey, nothing's going on. Smash or, you know, tear, you know, tear the tips. Take care of the tips and they'll really take care of you for a very long time. All right, hey, that's looking a little bit better. The darker you take certain areas, the lighter other areas will seem by contrast. So I couldn't see the road real well, if at all, when I first stamped it out because of that grayscale. Um, photograph, you know, the, the, the shadows from the photograph were in there, but now I'm starting to see it by color, coloring to each side of that road um, darker. Okay. All right, decisions. That that was kind of the direction I wanted to go so far, but now let's see. Oh, let's try a, an orange of sorts. Let's start. Am I ready to take? Let's see. I have this water area down here. I'm kind of wondering if I want to do that in sponging or if I just want to do that with some uh, pens. Let's take some pens here and let's move into some warm tents. Now I'm changing medium here. <laughs> I know how this works on cardstock, but let's see how it kind of works. I mean, I've done a little bit of it um, so far in my brief kind of experimentation with uh, photographs, but I haven't done it enough to really get a really good feel of it. So here's what I'm doing. I'm kind of, instead of going with something like an orange like this, okay, I'm getting what I can visually see are kind of more pale versions of it to, to work up into that orange, okay? So I usually like to work a little bit light and then, you know, incrementally work a little bit darker. So let's start bringing in some little, you know, this orange. And I can get right out to the edge of the imagery too, because this is much more of an exacting, exact type of application of color. Okay, so again, I'm not coloring in to fill in everything. I just want to add a tinge of this color. Okay, this one's pretty orange. It's too orange, just left alone. So what I'll do is I'll apply some of it like so. And then what I'll do is I'll try to use um, a blending type of uh, application to uh, kind of incorporate it in a little bit more using a lighter color. Okay, see so how that really stands out. It's very awkward, right? So what I do is I add it in. This is a brighter, darker tone, and then I'll just go into a lighter version. And I'll just kind of go back into it like that and take advantage of the characteristics of the Alcohol link meaning it will go back into solution if you hit it with um, another pen color. In this case, it's just a lighter version of that existing color, or you can use a blender. I usually like to use, if I want that color in that area anyway, instead of using a blender, I'll just use a lighter version of that color that I'm blending in. These are just uh, Mari LaPlume alcohol inks. Any, any brand will work just fine. So that alcohol ink, that alcohol ink's adding that really nice kind of punch in terms of intensity, isn't it? But I don't want it too much, you know, so. Um, so let's 
good way to blend it in like so. I do like that color a lot. So let's try this one right here. Oh, I thought this one was darker. Hmm. See, I'm just going right over the top of that green. And they blend in. They harmonize very well. Okay. Like that. Uh, this is like a tan or something like that. Just kind of blends it out. So I usually work light, then kind of dark, bright, and then I blend in with the light again. Kind of a circular process uh, in terms of additions. Okay. Dare I try kind of a reddish? Okay, let's move this some of that. See that right there, how much it really kind of stands out awkwardly. Then you just go back in with a lighter tone, kind of in the same family. General, you know, color family. Um, and just blend that right on out. Or kind of spread it around too. You can actually lift color off too, just by kind of dabbing it and it kind of spreads that ink out a little bit because the alcohol inks do go back into solution when you hit them. It, it doesn't really stain the paper, it kind of sits on the surface. Unless it's like a matte paper that's really absorbent or something like that, but I find that you can really kind of manipulate them kind of after the, uh, after the, uh, application of them. Okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far, I think. So far in this entire process of working with um, photographs, I've been really pleasantly surprised. I, I find it works Everything that I've tried so far, I'm not doing kind of anything too crazy, you know, in terms of technique. A lot of times I'm just kind of seeing if I can force um, kind of a similar um, process or aesthetic that I'm normally doing on just white paper, cardstock, or whatever, onto the surface right here and. I've been really pleasantly surprised. At... There are there are differences, but the similarities are um, surprising uh, in many ways. Okay, I'm just kind of bringing some of that tone down in here instead of just having it all green down here. See, I'm kind of incorporating that in. Okay, now we can go in with some of this and. Bridge, you can bring some of that same color. Like so, okay. All right, let's try to hit. I don't know if that water would be blue down here. It's usually reflecting the color of the sky. But I do want some, some kind of value down there. So, let me just go with the blue. It doesn't read as blue at all, It's because it's like a, such a faint version of it, but let's go with some of this one. Okay, then we'll just, like I said, we'll work out kind of incrementally 
into some darker, brighter version of that one might be too bright. Let's go with the, uh, let's see what we have here. Aquamarine. It's really barely visible. <laughs> if I can barely see it, I'm sure you can't see it. Pastel blue, this one's a shuttle art version. Different brand. These pens now are like 50 cents. I saw some other ones really similar for 50 cents a pen. You get a set of like 80 for $40, maybe even cheaper now. It's really amazing. And these ones are all double-sided like that. You're saying, oh my god, don't, I don't want to see that. I just, you know, I've got my 100 Copics that, you know, you bought for, you know, a few dollars each or whatever. Hey, those ones are probably the best, but um, I just went with these. And for my use, they're adequate. But like I said, those ones are probably better. But I don't use mine quite as much as a lot of people, so I just kind of went for a really big, bulky set. And someone gave me the uh, the uh, the Marvy ones here to try out. Not Marvy themselves. Okay, so um, let's hit the shadows down there. It's kind of a brownish gray tinge. It's interesting, I can feel the texture of the ink as I ran it across like that, like this. So that there's a different feeling or surface. And maybe the way it, it takes and uh, holds the ink than cardstock. Maybe things are a little bit more kind of surface oriented. Okay, and this is a this is a brownish gray, so I'm just going in to the trees and adding in some little bit extra shadows kind of more that I established with the dye based inks. You might be able to just go in and just color straight away. I found that I don't know, I just went with the dye based inks because I'm very familiar with that entire process. And I felt like I can get a kind of a nice light application of inks using that. And then this would be kind of more for some for the specifics, but if you're good at blending and things like that with your, your your markers, you might want to try just coloring it right in, you know. I don't think that was a loss cause or anything like that with the uh, with the uh, the dye based, but I am getting going for a pretty full saturation right here. Okay. Now here's some rocks down here in the shadows. Okay, so I'm going in, I'm just kind of reiterating the shadows that are down there. I'm not coloring on the rocks, but there's some shadows at the base of those rocks. Okay, so you just kind of make them a little bit darker. You can just kind of reiterate what exists on the imagery itself, just to kind of further flesh out those forms. You know, you can do that as much as you want, or, you know, you don't have to, because the shadows are already down there, but this is just this extra little thing you can do if you so choose, okay? It's one of the easiest kind of lighting types of uh, additions you can make on a piece is just to reiterate what's already, what already exists. Okay, I can do that on the road too. These, these little pebbly areas and this little groove, you know, brought about by you know, the horse and buggy or whatever, you know, probably. Okay, this is just a really light gray here. Putting some of this into my rooftop or my shadows if I want to, underneath the eaves. I just put my hand here and this is feeling really kind of sticky. It's almost like what it feels like after you, you're, you know, you've 
run a print out of your uh, your inkjet printer. That's it has this tacky feel to it with all these additions that I'm applying here. Now, I'm sure that'll dry. I think. <laughs> I'm sure I think that. All right, maybe I can get a little bit more bold. Let's try um, a much brighter yellow here. Let's see if that'll influence anything. Remember, where it, I'm applying it over the top of what might have been gray underneath, it's probably not going to get very bright or light as I apply this down, but maybe just another layer kind of can add to the richness of the hue in that given area. like it. It's, it's kind of warming certain areas up a little bit. Okay, now well, let me see here. I think that road can use a little bit more detailing. Sometimes I get done with my scenes and when I'm making these videos and uh, kind of in, in the instructional spirit I'm kind of talking about, you know, specifics. And <laughs> sometimes I think maybe I didn't really observe as well as I could have, but then it's like, oh, I forgot to use, you know, the alcohol pen there or whatnot, so I'll kind of forget little things here and there. And that's a brown. It's too much of it, right? So I'll just go like that, and I'll go in with the, that grayish brown. I'll just kind of blend that in a little bit more. Apricot. It's a, kind of an even, I see it as a, like a lighter, warmer version of a brown, but related to it, so that's why I'm using that. Okay. All right, now this is getting a little bit tacky. It's not providing, it's not making anything harder to work with it or anything like that that the applications are very smooth and easy. But I think I will allow that to set up a little bit and dry. And I'm thinking about a little bit of color in those clouds too, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, a few minutes have gone by. And I've allowed this to dry, I'm trying to assess whether or not um, there was a change in value here. Maybe you were able to tell that more than I, uh, what that, um, I don't know, whatever, time shift. But going in here, one of the things when I came back, it's like I can notice um, some other, um, shadows that I that I kind of missed in here. Now one of the things that occurs to me too, and I think it's the alcohol ink sitting on the surface of this paper, but this is still really sticky, okay? So that being said, I have a feeling that if I spray this with a, a spray sealant, I need to be pretty careful about kind of the layer that I lay down on there, making sure it's not too thick. Okay, this is a little bit of a purplish tinge. I'm just adding this into some of the shadows. It doesn't read as purple, but purple kind of goes well with, you know, that, you know, purple and orange type of color scheme. So adding a little bit of that in there. And let's see something right here. Let, let, let me see if I have a really pale blue. Yeah, this one's just called pale blue. All right. <laughs> 
I need to get another stack of coffee paper. I'm down to two pieces here. Let me see if I can kind of add some of this into some of these clouds. Maybe on the underside of them or something like that. I really can't see anything. This is such a pale blue. It's almost, it's so pale you can't see a thing. Let's try this one. Periwinkle. Let's try this on some of these kind of lighter clouds. Let's see if I can add a tinge of a different hue into the mix. A little bit. It's barely visible though. Oh, let me try this one. This is where I need kind of an intermediate between that like 5% and 10%. I need like a 7 or something like that. This one's a little bit darker than I'd want maybe. Actually it's not too bad. Or it's not too dark, I shouldn't say bad. Okay, now over the gray, it really doesn't show up very well. But eh, there's a tinge of it, okay? If I had pure white, I think it shows up quite a bit because I, I see it right there in that little bit. Let's put try some of this down in these clouds. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't know if you can tell. See, there's just a slight tinge up there, so it's not just grayscale color. And I have a feeling that on my last piece someone thought it was black and white. And it, it essentially is, but I have a feeling that this print was actually a color print. It was just gray skies. And this is a really old print. This is just like from Walmart and uh, someone's pack of cards that they put together. I suspect that's what this is from. And uh, they were selling it as photo stamping cards. So, you know, you set to go with a bunch of photographs if you wanted to try your hand at photo stamping years and years ago. And again, this is, uh, I believe these are the photographs of Randall Curry, the person that kind of came up with this entire kind of methodology of uh, stamping on photographs with um, your scenic stamps. Okay, so let's go in now and add light back into dark. Am I done there with that? No, let me, th this is what happened on my previous thing. I was thinking, I was looking at that covered bridge and I thought, eh, I should have added some toning to it. Aging, I guess, kind of, or, or weathering. So let's make it a little bit less um, kind of uniform. Okay, on the sides there's, you know, like some rust or something like that. Um, in some areas. That looks a little better. So remember, a little bit darker. I think I want lighter. Just kind of blend that in a touch. All right. Okay, light on dark. We're talking about gel pens, various incarnations. I need to start working with my shuttle art ones. I've just been using some pastel Marvy ones, either the shuttle art. These ones are like 10 cents each, literally. Uh, and these packs. All right. It's a Uniball shuttle art. Okay. Now, <laughs> I could bring in some reds and things like that too in here, but. I think I'm just going to be using this more for highlighting, so let's see how this goes. Okay. Actually, that, that's really light against that background, so it's standing out quite a bit. So it's a way to go back in and... In this case, it's not really so much reintroducing light back into a darker area, because the, the photograph itself was already fairly, you know, grayed out in many areas. So this is a way to introduce lighting for the first time in some areas. In some areas, I mean, I colored it, you know, a pretty decent amount, but I think those areas I was, where it did get dark, it was fairly dark already in terms of uh, the existing photograph um, lighting. All right, so that it's kind of bringing things to life a little bit, isn't it? Yeah. What we're doing is we're kind of 
punching forward some um, value into those areas. It's highlighting, but highlight, highlighting is, is about values. It's about bringing um, light into um, a darker area. It doesn't have to be dark. It just has to be darker than what you're applying on the, paper, on the uh, surface. Yeah, right. This is looking very nice, I have to say. I'm not complimenting my own work here. I'm, I'm talking about the, uh, the capabilities of the, uh, the paper. Um, you never know if it's going to uh, stand out or stick out or whatever. Some papers are a little more absorbent. So, um, as I apply these inks over the top of it, sometimes it shows up, but then it kind of mellows out and it's a little bit more translucent where um, the gel pen highlights get darker because, I don't know, it's, something happens. It's like they get a little more translucent and uh, the inks underneath it kind of show through a little bit more, which isn't a bad thing because it kind of incorporates it in with the, uh, the surroundings, but sometimes it's it's a little bit harder to tell what something's going to look like after it dries. Sometimes it dries a little bit darker than uh, um, what it looks like when you first applied it, so sometimes it's a little bit harder to gauge. Not that there's like a tiny tolerance level or something like that where it was like oh, that looks good, and then it darkens up, and it's, oh my god, that looks bad, or something like that. It just, you don't get a kind of a true representation of the final result upon the first application of it. All right, that's really starting to bring it together. Boy, that is really lively. See, this was kind of all in darkness, right? But now this, oh, this, this pen is really standing out, and it's standing out more than I thought it would. It, do, it doesn't seem to do that on, I don't know, sometimes on glossy. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, kind of, it's like little minutia differences. And sometimes a little bit more, uh, not quite so minutia like, it's more, a, you know, kind of a bigger change. But real glittery, I, I don't know, glistening maybe? These two are the same here. I'll put these back. This one's a pale orange. So why not use the same colors that you're using in your color schemes in the highlighting? Okay, it doesn't always have to be just like a white pen or something. That's my main one is the white, but... Um, uh, there are so many... gel pens out there and really really reasonable okay and if you've been crafting a while you're probably like me and you probably bought you know one of those big packs of gel pens at like a costco or anywhere craft store or whatever they were really cheap back when not as cheap as they are now but and you didn't use them for a while, or you went home and used them, or your kid tried to use them, or whatever, and they just didn't work. They were all clogged up. Well, I haven't bought a ton of packs because I haven't needed to, but um, they I bet they're all kind of made in the same general area, if not the same manufacturer overseas. And uh, the shuttle art ones I'm talking about, not these uniball ones. These uniball ones I never had a problem with. Sometimes they clog, you know, but it's usually after a while. Um, but those cheap ones, um, they work great. Here, let's get into some of these. Now watch it not work for me. Now some of these I've never used at all, so I need to get them flowing. Like this one's not working, but I've never... I haven't used... 80% of this. I have a, it's a, there's 180 colors in the pack, so there's a huge amount of them. Okay, now see, this one's like a pale pink or something like that. It's really, really light. 
if it doesn't show well it show, oh it actually shows up very well here it just doesn't show up in white because the contrast but it shows up really nicely on this darker um, background here but anyways um it's a good way to get a lot of colors for a really reasonable price for me 180 colors i'm not associated with shuttle art or in, at all but 180 colors 180 refills for those colors um, for me at the time 25 dollars for the in, all of it for the entire pack that's <laughs> that's that's purchasing power for us crafters right I mean, you can get 180 anything pens or whatnot um, pastels metallics glitter um, neon you know it's in it's, a, it's an assorted set so it comes in all those and a lot of different um, values per hue so you have kind of light green medium green darker green blues all the blues and then you start going into a light blue metallic a medium blue metallic dark blue metallic light blue glitter you know what I mean it has everything it's a pretty good way to go and I don't know the pens work for me like I said some of these um, I haven't used at all. Just give them a little whack to kind of, kind of get them flowing. Something like that. There it comes. See it? Eh. It's the initial flow. That might take a little bit more time. Okay. Ah, this one's okay. I'm not gonna take it. Sometimes it takes me a little, you know, a few minutes to get it kind of flowing a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Let's try this blue one down here. At least in these rocks. The one thing that it didn't have for me too much is it didn't have. Um, I'm going to bring some of this blue that's down in this water up into this. grass area. I don't know. It doesn't read. Well, it actually does. <laughs> I was going to say it doesn't read as blue, but blue stands out pretty good. It just brings a little bit of that same hue visual element into another area of the scene, so it's not just only there, like this isolated version of it. So you can, you know, you can just bring a couple dots of it. You know, it's not a big commitment to that color. But it brings a little bit more of that continuity. I just put a few dots of it out here. Okay. All right, here's the white. White's going to potentially stand out the most. Okay. So... some of these down into these rocks and just put in a few little highlights on my rocks at the base of all my little rocks in these designs is a shadow okay and on the top of it there's a highlight and I get very detailed in my designs so that doesn't mean you have to do anything to them but what I'm doing is I'm just putting the highlight on the kind of the top side of it and there's a little bit of that shadow with the alcohol inks on the bottom side of it so and it gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional effect. So if I put my hand right here, like on the top of my knuckle, see there's a little bit more of a highlight. And then, you know, the I'm being side-lit here for my studio lighting, but bottom area right here would be the shadow. And in between is just the colors that I've colored down there or the color of the, you know, the print. Okay? Does it make sense? Highlight, I mean, uh, highlight the top. Shade the bottom. Kind of more shading. The highlighting isn't really, you know, it's like these pens right here. See that little 
what you're doing is you're kind of adding in like that, it's that little highlight right there, but the most of it is just, you know, even on this orange right here, there's a little highlight on the top, so you don't add a ton of this, you know, it, uh, you get the point across with just a, uh, you know, a, a select amount of this. If it's not, if it's really light in a given area, you can add more of this, but if it's fairly dark, I wouldn't add too much highlighting. It stands out. How much do you say? Put a few dots down and hold it out at arm's distance from yourself and see if it's effective as is. If not enough, then add more. Okay, so it's not kind of this kind of theoretical thing. Make it visual and it's going to be different for every scene and personal as far as it, how it looks to you as the creator of that piece. And if you absolutely don't know, <laughs> I, I, I say add a little bit more than you, what you think. I like people that kind of go a little bit more than to always kind of hold back. Oops. Okay, where was I? All right. This is really, really fun here. Um, it's kind of like a different, it's kind of like the process of working on a, a colored piece of uh, cardstock or whatever paper you know when you do those types of prints then you go back into it with the uh, the highlighting and whatnot I guess I wasn't really thinking about it that way but that's really kind of what it is when you're going in with an existing kind of lighting scheme okay and when you're working on a when you're stamping on like a blue piece of paper or grayscale um, we've seen those ones, really cool ones on the brownish paper or whatnot. Stamp something out, highlight highlights, you know, add a little bit more shadows maybe with some other medium. Um, but that's what this is kind of reminding me of in spirit. Uh, one thing that I kind of forgot about was I really like the use of versifying ink, but I did a versifying... Um, foreground on another scene, photo stamping scene, and several days later that ink, that ink was as wet as when I applied it. It just did not dry on here at all. So I'm going to need to add in my foreground elements using dye-based ink. Dye-based ink isn't going to uh, stamp over the top of this gel pen very well, and I'm not sure if it how it's going to look over the top of uh, alcohol inks either. The alcohol inks might have kind of sealed things off a little bit, so we'll see how that goes. If it doesn't stamp very well, I'll just have to kind of fill in, you know, where you stamp over and it. If I kind of raise it and if it kind of fish eyes in there, you know, I'll try, try to think of something else to do. Okay, so maybe in that case, maybe I should have added that foreground before I did the you know this type of effect. All right, see that fence right back in there? It'd be kind of nice if that stood out a little bit, right? So let's try to bring that out a little bit, a little bit of highlighting. Maybe the fence post and whatnot is painted white or something, so it stands out a little bit more in white. Okay, kind of see that it's kind of bright and brightens it up a little bit. I'm just kind of adding a little thin layer at the top of it so it's kind of highlight. Yeah, somewhat 
lit a little bit. It's this little area up here where it's lighter, okay? Um, just add a little bit of a highlight to that as well. I'll kind of go along, I'm just going along with the uh, what exists on here. If it's re in a real dark area, you wouldn't see too much of that highlighting probably. See that kind of stands out. All right, now there's some areas in these trees that where I can see the trunks and maybe I could bring some of that out a little bit. They're kind of in shadow, but it's kind of fun to bring some of those out a little bit more. Like that. I don't know if that looks good or not. <laughs> I can kind of knock them down a little bit, or you can add a little bit more um, color over the top of it with a gel pen. Kind of put a little bit more on this road. I like I like my visual lead-in areas to be a little bit lighter, kind of to take the viewer into the scene. So, being that this area of the road was so grayed out to begin with, I'll just kind of bring a little bit of texturing into it in the form of, you know, something very light the gel pen like that. See, it kind of creates this little pathway up there. It's a little bit too much, I know, but let, let me try to mellow that out a little bit with uh, I don't know my gel pen thing too well. I'm just kind of grabbing them on the top. A lot of the pens that I grab um, I think, oh, that's a brown. It turns out to be a glitter brown. Okay. So this is some brown. Hmm. I don't want to go too dark, but I'll just kind of intersperse this in with some of that white so it's not so, you know, uh, Tinkerbell-ish. You know? uh, Glitter, you know, like a little glitter trail of going back up in there or something like that. Let's see, is there any other opportunities while I have this one out? This brown. Let's add a little bit more texturing to the, uh, the covered bridge. Let's add some little lines here and there in the wood grain, maybe. I'm not sure. If th this might be a little bit iridescent. Oh, it is. Ah, okay. This is a metallic brown. And it's standing out. I can tell it's capturing that light. So see, if I go like that, you can't really see it. But if I go like that, you see that? <laughs> that high. Now, I don't know if that... It doesn't really go well with that. But isn't that cool, though? This lime green. Yeah. All right. I don't use that one yet. But, oh, this is a glitter green. Sorry, folks. That's the difference. If this is the first scene you've seen me do in video form, it's the difference between kind of an instructional video and a lot of my videos, which are kind of me just turning on the, uh, hitting the record button as I kind of experiment around with something, and then maybe some people can kind of gain some sort of uh, information and techniques from kind of my experimentation here, but. Um, I'm just kind of winging it here. Okay. 
Okay, any little highlights to these rocks down here? And I think that is a really fun piece right there. And I'm not even done here. The, the part that I'm really eager to get to is um, the white pigment ink, which I think is going to really kind of incorporate the background <clears throat> photograph in with this foreground here. I think it'll really have a, kind of a, a nice effect in there based on kind of what I've seen so far with other <clears throat> photo stamping experiments, recent ones. Okay, let's go with, I'm going with some foreground here in the form of these reeds. We're putting us as a viewer right into the scene by having something really close to us and hopefully it creates a little bit more depth of field and perspective in here. Eh, not too bad, it's stamped over I didn't stamp it over a heavily um, textured area, but it, it stamped over the uh, the alkyl ink pretty good, and I did use a lot of alkyl ink for this piece. It's a little bit lighter than I'd, what I'd want, but that's better than, you know, never drying at all. Which I'm not sure. Oh, I wonder if we embossed on here what that would look like. You'd have to be careful on the photo paper because the photo paper would really curl. So, but that'd be kind of interesting though, wouldn't it? All right, so, see that? It's kind of adding that foreground right there. We'll put some more on this side of the road. No, we won't because the road's going this way, right? So I'll just go like this right here. Okay. Go with my oak branch. Now that scene is really, it, it, there's a very different feel from top to bottom, isn't there? Because of that scene back there, or the photograph. So let's incorporate that into the scene a little bit more. And this is the oak branch stamp. So I have it, it's perfect for kind of an overhanging type of thing. I designed it to where it's thick on one side and thin on the other, and you can do it as a bush coming from underneath, or you can have it as a kind of a nice overhang from over the top of it. It's weighted differently, so you can use different portions for the amount of this image that you'd want. Kind of frames things off from side to side, right? It kind of has the same kind of there's a rhythm to it. Trees and branches and things like that. If you don't get it right, it's like as if you were kind of drawing a you know a ballerina, but you drew her feet you know pointed backwards. It just it's like a a static thing, but there's a certain gesture to uh, branches and whatnot, and trees that have to have kind of an inherent grace to them, so that they kind of disappear in the background too, or foreground in this case, and they don't stand out. But if you look at them, it stays within the rhythm of the of the environment. Okay. All right. So there's your foreground. Why not? <clears throat> These are my little gulls right here. And there's some background birds. Okay. I kind of wanted to stamp this out because I stamped out a really spooky version of all this stuff. So this is my previous scene <laughs> using a lot of these images. It has a little bit of a different feel to it, doesn't it? Maybe this is this during, this is this scene right here during uh, 
like Halloween night. This is what it looks like on Halloween night. This is what it looks like the rest of the time. Well, during the fall or whatever. Okay, so we have that. We, I just need to uh, bring in some of those extra touches in here using the, uh, the white pigment ink, and we'll be all set, I think. It looks good as is, though, but I think the pigment ink will really incorporate this in a little bit more and introduce a little bit of extra lighting. Okay. I went and got three fresh cotton balls. <laughs> I only brought one down before. I didn't know if it, how it would work, if it would work, and I found that it works incredibly. So, so your mist applicator, your crafting mist applicators, right here. Call it cotton swab for the more detailed areas, and kind of a bigger one right here for your more kind of general areas. Okay. You don't need to buy them from some craft manufacturer that has, you know, ordered them um, dyed in pink or something like that, you know, for the crafting industry or whatnot. It's uh, just everyday objects used for your whatever specific purposes. Now this, I don't know, this might be too big for certain areas in here. Yeah, okay, let me let me use it a little bit. It's a, a really fantastic applicator for for my needs. Okay. I, I can't even tell how much is on here, that's a thing. So I'd recommend having just a piece of scratch paper. Most of our um Pigment ink pads are really super juicy, so kind of be careful about that. Now, I don't know how forgiving this is on this type of paper, but I can just buff it out if I don't like it on glossy cardstock. I have a feeling on this emulsion, once you kind of lay it down, it might be somewhat set on there. So I'm going to recommend a very dry, very slow application of this. <laughs> and very controlled. Not that I don't do that on other types but uh, of paper, but, but I just know I can kind of manipulate it later on on other types of papers. All right, now I find, I find that this looks really good if you oscillate it a little bit, meaning you have it in some area, and then in other areas you just kind of leave as is. You don't want to just fill in the whole area unless it's supposed to be just like this totally foggy day. So this is introducing this kind of element of this kind of whimsical, kind of atmospheric touch into the scene through the use of illuminated moisture in the air, which is, that's what it represents. So, see it down here, it's kind of diffusing the, uh, the crisp imagery of the piece. So even though it's softening up some things and kind of making some areas less um, apparent. It's less colored. It's it's less defined. You might have put, you know, some gel pen pieces in there and it's kind of pushing that into the background a little bit. I find that it, it kind of enhances it by having a expansion of the textural range of a given area. So in other words, put some in some areas and just leave other areas just as is. All right, now let's take a look up here. I think those trees look really good. But if I put a little bit of this in this lighting where that cloud is meeting tree, I find that, that it puts a little bit of light onto that tree now, okay? There's no real definitive light source in here. It's just, I assume it's top lit. You know, there's sun somewhere above. So I'm just kind of putting some of this lighting on the top sides of that. So see, it kind of puts a softer light on it. The um, gel pen highlights are a crisp lighting effect. This is a soft lighting effect, okay? So let's see. See that little diffusion form there. 
You see that down there? Isn't that kind of fun coming off the water's um, surface? Oh, uh, let's see, let's add some around here. And, then, and this is what I mean about kind of incorporating the background in with the foreground now. We have the kind of illuminated moisture in the air, which is what clouds are. See this little spot down here where it's fairly light because we have that light cloud from the photograph back there. I'll just illuminate that area around that and the objects around it to make it look like there's a little bit of lighting now being cast on those trees right around in there. See, it's like a little bit softer and this is what it looks like from, let's like, say, arm's distance. I'm putting on barely anything right here because it's it usually looks good where light meets dark, okay? So this is darker down here, but the, right in there, there's no real light. It's not white, so I'm just putting a little bit right there, but see what that did? Doesn't it kind of turn it in space? It's saying that there's you're kind of enveloping certain things in some light by putting that in there. It's this illuminated light. All right, it's time for some detailed areas. Okay, now I'll put that up in those clouds up there. Yeah, it, it, to me it feels a little bit more, oh, I don't know, it, it incorporated, enveloped. Uh, just real light kind of applications. Really fun stuff. <laughs> I really enjoy doing these little types of touches like that. It, it seems just, I don't know, it just... It... These little things like this are really fun to do. And it's, it's fun to watch the transformation. It's like watching, um, you know, when you're embossing something, you're heating it up, you're heating it up, and then it starts to, you know melt or whatever and isn't that really a really fun process to see and that's kind of like the the feeling I get when I'm watching this happen because it's it's this kind of this little transformation that takes place it's almost it's changing the consistency of something right when you're embossing something it's like going from something a solid to a, a liquid to a solid again to and this there's something it's like changing the consistency or something it, it is it's definitely a textural consistency that's kind of changing but again you don't want to do it everywhere see like I'll put like a little bit in there doesn't it look a little bit more kind of dreamy and kind of magical when you do something like that. Um, directors do that all the time in films. They they have that fog machine running. It doesn't matter what time it is. It doesn't have to be kind of a twilight, you know, vampire in the woods episode either. You see it them using it during, you know, right in the middle of the day, there's this rolling kind of fog in the background of uh, different settings. And it just, it gives the area kind of a visual richness. Things it, are a little bit more shimmery and uh, there's a little bit more movement um, in the piece.
All right, now, sometimes when we're, we're starting off with an existing cloud or something of that sort, sky, doesn't have to be cloud, it could be a sunset scene in the background or something. Um, there's a lot of existing lighting, right? So what I found, though, is we can go in and we can enhance our skies in here. So if I want to add a high... Uh, lighting or highlight to certain clouds, I can do that, and this makes them look a little bit more dimensional too, in some ways. Now I'm not trying to just add in a whole new cloud in, in the darkness or something like that, I'm just kind of enhancing um, some of the forms that already exist. So you just have to look, you know, where are there kind of the darker I mean, a lighter area of that cloud, and I'm just making it even lighter with the use of some very dry and thin applications of this pigment ink here. And by doing this too, you're bringing this texture into the sky, which exists down in the uh, landscape, and you're you're going to inevitably be incorporating those two areas together visually with the use of common textures. Uh, on this one right here, I'm kind of what's going through my mind as I'm doing this is uh, I wonder if that's too much. <laughs> but it, it's really fun to apply so it's easy to kind of, you know, really get lost in the process and add on a bit and it I, my answer to that would be if I was someone was doing this in a class of mine I would just say do it as much as you want to if you're having fun at it because that's the entire thing it's not always about the end result it's about the uh, kind of the journey you took to get there and uh, if you enjoy a certain process then I don't know Indulge, go, go crazy with it, if you want to. Why not? I'm not trying to make a piece that's designated for, uh, you know, a museum of modern art or something like that, so... I'm trying to have some fun with stamping. Alright, so see that? Look at those clouds up there. Don't they look a little bit more kind of whimsical with that extra pigment ink in them? Yeah, I can see that little bluish tinge on there now too, can't you? And that was with that alcohol ink. I don't know why. I'm covering it up so it shouldn't stand out more, but for some reason it kind of stands out a little bit. In a very subtle way, but I don't know, I can see it. Okay, there's a little bit too much ink on this right now. It's leaving too much. You can just kind of tap it off before it dries or whatever, before it sets up. It might come off a little bit too after it sets up, but again, I don't know on this photo paper how much um, this technique remains on glossy cardstock. When it dries, it really dries much darker than what it looked like when it was freshly applied. Maybe that's the same thing right here, but I'm also tapping it over usually dye-based inks and not so thick of an application with the uh, alcohol pens normally, but I put a ton of alcohol pen touches on this piece. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I built that cloud out a little bit. It was a little bit kind of buried behind those trees. I 
actually looks pretty good. I guess, I guess you can kind of tap in a cloud where it didn't exist. Trying to lighten up this cloud over here a little bit more. fog back in there. I don't want too light though. <laughs> As I kind of go in here and I think I'm going to be removing it, I think I'm kind of spreading it out a little bit over there in that area. Okay, so there's the difference right there, <laughs> is once you apply it, it it's kind of stuck in there. Oh, okay, here, I can go back in with the gel uh, alcohol pen and just kind of knock it back down. Normally on glossy cardstock, I can wipe it off, but on this, I can just kind of go back over it with some alcohol ink and subdue some of that application. I guess the alcohol ink works, you know, wins out right up there, but... Well, look at that difference in texture. When it captures the line, you can really see that gel pen work up there when you do that. All right, so I don't know. I, I'm just really pleasantly surprised with photo stamping. Now, this photo stamping piece took a little bit longer. Again, I'm trying to figure things out from scratch, but I really put a lot of time into the coloring where, I don't have some other examples right here on my desk, but if you're working with silhouettes, you're just going, you're going with dark against light. Well, on this impression uh, stamp here, we have a lot of open area in here to fill in, okay? So, I thought it handled the, uh, the inks beautifully in terms of the application of the dye-based inks and then the coloring in with additional um, hue, um, coloring, and shading using the alcohol pens. On top of that, the gel pen inks for the highlighting portion went on there beautifully. And of course, what I've found in the past with the pigment ink, it really applies nicely over this um, paper. Uh, this one, I don't know, it's in Walgreens on my other ones, so I don't know where this came from. But um, I don't know, all the techniques look pretty good. One thing that I found just now was if you apply too much pigment ink, I, maybe you can take like a blender pen, but I just went in with some of that brownish tinged color and just knocked that back a little bit. There was a little bit too much um, kind of misty area in there that kind of kept spreading out that I couldn't get out of there because the surface is a little bit sticky here. So I'll have to spray this with a very light, um, maybe workable fixative. I don't know, I could try the Cryolon UV um, resistant clear too and see if that kind of fixes everything. But I imagine like a couple days of uh, letting this set up will dry it sufficiently, but who knows. All right, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the scene. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe. Gets a little bit more traffic to my little channel here. Um, and with as far as the scene goes, and photo stamping, I really recommend you try it out. Um, I'll, I need to put a link down into my uh, 
photographs. There's a lot of other photographs out there that are a lot better than mine, but I do have a Flickr gallery um, full of, you know, full re resolution um, background skies and clouds that you're more than welcome to um, download and print out and to try this technique out. I'll try to get a lo little bit more variation up there. I'll have to take my camera out and uh, take a lot more photographs for this purpose because it is way too much fun to uh, to employ and uh, to kind of experiment around with. And again, with for me, I'm sure I'm just scratching the surface as far as the possibilities with this uh, kind of technique and methodology. So anyways, thanks again for tuning into the channel. If you have any questions, drop us a note in the comments section.